each little stumble kind of does it, it not only builds a story in a picture but it also gives us that moment of connection afterwards so even if you don't have the awesome sexy times you still reconnect and you still mm-hmm. regroup and that regrouping just makes you stronger Welcome to Normalizing Non-Monogamy, the podcast where we interview incredible people from across the entire spectrum of non-monogamy to hear their funny, sexy, and fascinating stories as they take us on their journey. We always strive to bring guests on the show who have a healthy and positive approach to non-monogamy. However, everyone approaches it a little differently. And in its core, our show is about hearing, highlighting, and learning from the different experiences and approaches people have. With that in mind, it is important to remember that the views and opinions expressed by our guests do not necessarily reflect those of our own. So sit back, relax, and just accept the fact that your time with us will be spent in an awkward turmoil of laughter and arousal. We should also let you know that this podcast will hopefully include some explicit language. If that kind of thing offends you, we suggest you keep listening until it no longer does. If you're under 18, you either need to stop listening or go get your parents and you can listen as a family. The choice is yours. Enjoy. Welcome to episode 18. Today we have a fun interview with the Bedhoppers. It is a super fun interview. (laughs) And we laugh a lot. Yeah, and sorry about uh, the fact that you can't understand most of what they're saying. That's not not our fault. That's just they're hard to understand because they're British. Yeah. I'm just kidding. I was going to say, that's a little bit harsh. They still speak English. I know, it's sort of English. (laughs) The Queen's English. No, we have a lot of fun with them, and we've actually become really good friends with them, so we wanted to say thank you to them for coming on the show, for having a good laugh. Uh, also wanted to mention that I am laughing almost the entire episode. I'm a quiet laugher. Yeah, you just can't hear you because you laugh silently somehow. <laughs> I've, devel- so, yeah. I've developed this skill over many years. And now when you're on a podcast, you want no one to be able to hear you. Well, anyway... <laughs> Also, really quick update. Uh, last week, we told a, a rather long story about how we wound up getting a 15% off coupon for anybody who uses our link on our website or goes to uh, www.stdtestexpress.com slash normalizing. normalizing. Uh, we Now, if you do a... Uh, your online STD testing through them, you'll get 15% off at least through the end of the year, maybe longer, who knows. Um, if you want to hear the full story of how that unfolded, it's about three minutes long. We <laughs> told back, like, we told it at week. the beginning of last week's show. Um, anything else important? Maybe you tell can, them our website. Yeah, you can contact us at normalizingnonmonogamy.com. There's a link there. T- Airplane. <laughs> We're... We're currently staying under an airport. Yeah, we are right close to an airport right now. Anyway, finish up. You can up. find us at normalizingnonmonogamy.com. There's a link there. You can um, contact us, or you can find us on Twitter or Casty under the screen name NNM Podcast. All right, let's go talk to some bedhoppers. British bedhoppers. All right, bye, guys. <laughs> you might. It's awkward. <laughs> I know. I told you. We're not, we're not always this awkward. You want to try? No. <laughs> you told me you were going to do it. All right. I asked you while we were on taking a break. Can we stop and fight for a little while and then we'll jump into the interview? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's really our thing. <sighs> I'll do it if you don't want to. Nope. Here we go. I got it. So thank you guys for, for coming on the show and, and tolerating our awkward beginnings. Could we, I was wondering actually, could we get a Mr. H intro song or is that, is that just for your show? Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. What do we want? Yeah. Ka-ching! Yeah. Just, oh, wow. That's <laughs> a very colorful ukulele. Are you supposed to sing? You sink in. All right. I think, I think we're good. I think that's perfect. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need lyrics. No, you don't need lyrics. <laughs> Not my way, guys. <laughs> well, so for anybody who doesn't know who you guys are, do you mind introducing yourselves, telling everybody a little bit about you? Cool. Okay. Uh, well, we are the Bedhoppers. Uh, we're from the UK. I'm Mr. H, and this is... Uh, I'm Mrs. H. And we're getting so good at saying that we now. We are getting it's, so good. It's amazing. <laughs> Go on then, tell everyone about us. No, you do that. What? You are so much better at talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, well, we've been in the lifestyle for about two years. Coming up to two years. Two years. So we're, we're swingers. So... 
Uh, it's been an interesting ride. So we've been documenting and chronicling, big mm-hmm. words altogether, our adventures in the lifestyle, giving people some hints and tips, and really just sort of talking about what we've been up to, I suppose. Poking fun at you. <laughs> Poking fun at me. <laughs> A lot. Yeah, it's 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 broadly the Mr. H mistakes show <laughs> while Mrs. H laughs at him. Oh, wait, wait, there'll be one episode that shall all be about me and my faux pas. <laughs> Can we record that one soon? I'd really no. like that. <laughs> and, I'm on best behaviour. <laughs> and for any for anybody who's not aware, you guys have been drinking the last two hours because it's like midnight your time, and it's only like six o'clock our time, and we were just at a movie, so we're. Well, Midnight here, yeah. yeah. This is yeah. like two hours. It's really been since about twelve in the afternoon, and it's probably <laughs> no, the cumulative effect of twelve true. hours of drinking. No. <laughs> <laughs> We've had a few um, little cheeky vinos this cheeky evening. Vinos. Yeah. <laughs> cheeky vinos. Yeah. Cheeky vinos. Excellent. Well, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. Actually, uh, gin and tonics. It's yeah. fine. We're good. We're, we're lucid. We're Talkative. Totally sober. I could absolutely drive right now. I can't back that up. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how did you guys get into it to start with? Two, uh, two the years lifestyle? Ago? Or the yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, the lifestyle. The we lifestyle. don't care about the your podcast. We want to hear about you, the you lifestyle. Guys, you guys have been together for quite a while, correct? Yeah. So, 18 years we've been together. Yeah, not long past our 11-year anniversary. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, so we we kind of well you brought it up really I did you brought it up and, on on holiday and Mr H's brain kind of exploded and <laughs> couldn't handle it and then went into six months of research <laughs> to try and get his head around it um, I, I I'm insanely jealous you're quite by yeah <laughs> and between very. us that combination didn't quite lock up as well as we thought it might. Um, but it, so it took me a long time to get my head around it and get into that, yeah. that state but, of mind. But broadly speaking, yes, we were on we were on a sunny holiday in the Canary Islands. We had a, a fun night out with a couple, and the the girl made a hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, whoa. You no, said no, that we couple did. were swingers. You'd already labelled them I swingers. Did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like earlier in the trip or earlier in the night? Yeah, earlier. Yeah, we'd seen them for a couple of days. They were at the pool, and um, he was um, massaging her. Oh. Um, it was, it was a topless place, um, which was wonderful, a topless pull. Um, but he was massaging her like he was going to be um, following up with something at some point. He was like a creepy <laughs> yoga instructor or something. But but they, um, I mean, she was cracking. She looked lovely. She, she was, really she was. She was really fit. He, he, he um, was punching. He, yeah, he was definitely mm. punching. And uh, Mrs. H was like, look at those guys. I mean, we, we, when you go on holiday, she, she loves the looking around the pool and <laughs> giving everyone characters and names. And yeah. these guys were the swingers. And, we, and you were joking that, oh, my God, I bet they totally want to fuck us for some reason. I don't know why they'd want to fuck us. But, but you, no, that we was, hadn't even talked about anything. <laughs> well, we hadn't. We, we, we'd watched a few episodes of, of, of polyamory and yeah. swing. But really, it was more entertainment. So the idea, the, the idea of entertaining ourselves as mm. swingers hadn't really come into play. And they were pretty much the only hot couple at the pool. Yeah, apart from us. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, and we, we had drinks with them, and they, um, well, she she tried to, to. She was quite friendly with both of us. Yeah, she tried to snog me, and I rejected her advances. I rejected them. So ethical. I know, right? And she made a pass at yeah. me, and. Um, he wandered over just as that happened and then ensued a couple of hours of row yes. <laughs> with us going, oh, my God, you were going to kiss that woman. I'm like, well. What do you mean you were going? She had her tongue down yeah, your throat. Yeah, she did, yeah. She made a pass at me. So. She made a pass, put <laughs> you up against the wall. I, my, I was like, what the actual fuck? And the, the chap she was with, it turns out they'd only been together a week, oh, which God, is yeah. brilliant. And, they'd uh, met on a mindfulness retreat. Yeah, there's something that's like quite magical about that. He didn't, he'd never seen a drinking um and was wow. very apologetic but then i think after she she snogged you or passed <laughs> you or kissed you whichever way i never use kissing on i can't stand that phrase um but after she did that she pretty much passed out yes yeah, she did <laughs> yeah and then we spent hours and hours and hours just arguing over it and and bashing out what the hell it was and then the whole idea and the concept of the lifestyle and it's born. was born yeah and you went away and researched it all yes i went and away and decided that Actually, you'd be okay with having two women play with you. Oh, my God. What no, I didn't know that until that actually <laughs> happened. I was still worried about that up until it happened. I was so was it, was it something on, on your behalf, Mrs. H, that you had thought about before that time? Or was that sort of something that triggered it for you? 
No, when when I met uh, Mr. H, so years and years ago, I did I did announce to him that I was bi. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, to- I, there was, I was quite honest about that. I there was no way my brain could have comprehended that. That was something that Mr. H took out of his brain and I'm motioning that it was, was in my brain, took it and, and screwed it up and threw it away. Um, and to be fair, to it didn't come up then for years because it didn't need to. No. You know, we we were raising a family and what have you, so it just kind of just, it was one of those conversations we had at the very start and then did nothing with. No. Until years and years later and then this holiday triggered it all. Yeah. And then I researched a ton and listened to everything, yeah. read everything. Yeah. Right. So every podcast every book every tv show i just downloaded it and slowly yeah. but surely kind of got to yeah. understand why it might That's be fair. quite interesting and why putting mm-hmm. aside some minor jealousy might be to my benefit yeah, yeah. we thought so, we could have some fun so was it something that initially you had started thinking about exploring so you could explore that the bisexual half of your sexuality or was was that not necessarily part of it I don't think I thought beyond the fact that it could be fun for him to experience two of us having, you know, being with you. That's kind of, I didn't ever really envisage, I don't think, it, okay. it, it expanding to maybe full couple swaps. I don't know. It's in your master plan where you're no, rubbing your hands really. together. <laughs> <laughs> First, we shall start with the single female. <laughs> then we shall move on to the couples. And then the 10 guy on Mrs. H thing will be quite productive. <laughs> oh my God. It's about escalated rapidly. Well, in your head. That's Put that one head. down. Just 10. Today we're starting so, slowly. I, I thought it could be fun if, since I'm bi, then it could be fun for him to join in with that and experience two women together. But it's important to, to, to say I'm, I'm as jealous of you being with well, a yeah. guy as I am with you being with a woman. Well, once you got over your kind of jealousy and you were like, yeah, we could try something. Yeah. Then, I mean, eventually you twisted my arm <laughs> up and I was kind of like, OK. But I didn't know until we saw that happen. Yeah, that's true. I, I was very worried that I would flip. I, 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 totally I was didn't, worried too. Yeah. And mm-hmm. um, our unicorn didn't seem to be so worried. Mm. But... I, I totally didn't know how I was going to react. Mm. And it, it, it was kind of like, actually, this isn't so bad after all. In fact, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, it was just baby steps. Yeah, yeah I was right. going to say, so what was the first, after you went back and did all the research, what was your first step actually meeting somebody else? Well, we, we went on to, uh, in the UK, we, we there's a website called Fab Swingers, which is the, the main one that um, seems to, to go around. And we, we, we set a profile up. Mm. And literally within minutes of, being online and setting the profile up, uh, a unicorn got in touch with us. So um, we, we it was quite lucky. It's not happened to us really since then. No. Um, and then we went and met her, and I, you know, we both of us, to be fair, shit ourselves. And I know it's a phrase we use a lot, uh, but we were both so nervous, yeah. didn't know what's going to happen. Is she a serial killer? Is she going to be mental? You know. It, all this stuff, what does this mean for our relationship? Yeah, I think it was the relationship piece. For, for us, yeah. Like- yeah, I mean, we fought so hard to be together in the first place. We both come from very different places. Um, it was a struggle for us to actually get together and stay together. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've had lots of trials and tribulations just to get into that point. So we really place a lot of value on our relationship. It's, um, so, And I know everybody does. I, I yeah, get that. Yeah, for us to share that, it's it had to be the right thing. Yeah, it? It, it did. So... You know, we, and then we, we kind of put one on the site, met the unicorn and dabbled with that a bit and did that a couple of times. And mm. I, mm. I have a thing about fairness. Fairness is probably one of my greatest weaknesses and greatest strengths. And then I was like, well, well um, and I know what she's going to say in a minute. I'm not. <laughs> she's going to say. Oh, he's by your own petards. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm not. I'm going to let you trick yourself but, out. <laughs> thank you. Um, but we, we then, then I was like, well, why shouldn't we play with a couple because then you get entertained as much well you do anyway with a single female but it was fair um we're still not in that place where i'm i'm quite in that single guy zone nah, uh, that's that's a little bit beyond <laughs> the grown-up mr h um but i'm evolving you know there, there's been occasions where that sort of happened um but it's not something that i'd necessarily want to seek you out. wouldn't seek out no no i think that would right. freak me out still so leading up to that first meet, you said you went on and did a bunch of research. Did you guys continue the conversation and just kind of exploring how this would look and what you guys were going to look for? Or, or was it sort of that one conversation at the 
you know, on vacation and then came back, you did some research and then you well, just... It, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's a really, it's a difficult one actually because um, when we had that, we, we had that vacation or, or holiday as we would call it. <laughs> um, yeah. We did that. Yeah, use your... Uh, uh, oh, sorry, I speak better British. Yeah. Go blimey, governor. Why didn't you talk like us lot over here? <laughs> <laughs> you got to pick time. up your game, Finn. I know. <laughs> <laughs> So we, we came back from that holiday and, and, and very sadly, I mean, we talked about this on my podcast. My mum was really ill uh, um, yeah. and eventually passed away. But she was she had cancer and we had a long period of time where we had to travel every weekend for about, well, about seven hours in the yeah. car, sort of getting there and back. So we had all this time um, together, together, just by ourselves in a car. In a car. <laughs> um, and. You know, we, we I learned two things. One, how to bring off Mrs. H in a car while I was still driving, Brilliant. Um, which is always a useful <laughs> thought. So, in fact, she actually became conditioned to certain roads, and, and you'd, you'd kind of get to a certain motorway, and, and you could see that she'd start lifting a dress. I was like, holy fuck! You know, it doesn't, just because I did it once or twice, <laughs> doesn't really mean it's... sound awful. Yeah, but in the context of going to see my dying mother, it also puts Shush. it in a really bad light, I no, suppose. No, yeah, how, you... You spun that in a really bad time. <laughs> but you enjoyed it. Anyway, so there was that. And plus, we listened to lots of podcasts. Yeah, we, we had lots of good conversations. And we, I think the thing was is that we put ourselves in lots of different scenarios. How would we feel if we did this with a couple? How would we feel if we did this with a, with a woman? And what would happen? And how would you go? And, and because of that scenario play um, and that, that approach, yeah, it really we, helped we us. we played out every possible scenario that could happen in those car journeys, couldn't we? I do so, like to Batman things. You do. So by the time it actually came around to doing something, we pretty much talked our way through what could happen, might happen, should happen, and what we'd do if any of those things happened. It was like, when it actually came down to it, it was like a choose-your-adventure book. Oh, yeah, with the ending. <laughs> yeah, you just turn to page 34 if you want to play with her breasts. I remember those books. Yeah. They didn't end like that. No. <laughs> The last two pages were stuck together for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, we promised you an entertaining interview. <laughs> yeah, no, you haven't you haven't let us down so far. No, um, it's it hasn't been absolute rubbish. Is that better on the British? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Rubbish. Okay. That's good. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so, you guys had a single female, which is obviously they call them unicorns for a reason. Mm-hmm. How did? How did that work? And then did you guys or have you guys progressed from there to other couples? And it sounds like maybe not quite single males yet. Oh, yet? not single males. Yet. Yeah, the unicorn was, no, not yet. <laughs> you, well, you have. I have, but not, we haven't sought them out. I, I will refer you to the, the evening of three men in a hot tub. Great rhyme. Three men in a tub. Yeah. yeah but, but, <laughs> it so sounds like I, it could be a movie. Yeah, it, it was it was it was much better than three men and a baby. I can tell you that now. <laughs> <laughs> Quite different. Um, so we well we played played with the unicorn and we just progressed. Really, I think mm. it kind of we were so amazed that we actually went through the unicorn thing and survived and found it well good. Yeah, it was sexy. I think we. It, she was, I think okay. It's important for me that the the actual idea was probably better than the execution. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. The actual um, right. situation itself, when it did happen, was all very exciting, but it was probably more the lead up and the expectation and the fantasy and the aftermath that was probably more exciting than the actual event itself. Okay. Because the event itself was probably quite a bit clunky and nervous and, yeah. Yeah, I mean, just like anybody's first time doing this, yeah. right? I don't think yeah. that's... Yeah. That was fair. But to, to be fair... She'd been in the lifestyle a while, a little while. Yeah, she, and she, she had, had the benefit of having played with lots of couples, and she was really good with us. So, so and she introduced us to a lot of different things and took us mm. to a lot of clubs, a lot of parties. So it was quite a safe way of going because if there's three of you, you do, you know you've got your buddy, um, and and she she was very happy to drive, so we could have a drink or two, um, something that I'm becoming slightly famous for. Um, and you know we kind of <laughs> we kind of did that that stuff together as a unit, and that was quite fun because if if any one of us wanted to to escape, we only had to you know throw down our veto card or whatever. Yeah, all and, the three of us were kind of would look out for each other. Yeah, and I think that, that led to some periods where that was a bit awkward, and we missed things that we wanted to stay for. But at the same point, she was equally very happy to take you know to, yeah. to drag us out or, right. or to take us out and take us home when we needed to, yeah. which is cool. And so from there, you guys 
I, are you still with her, or have you guys parted ways and you've moved we on have to... Now, we have now parted ways, uh, but we met up with her quite a few more times. Yeah, so we, we had quite a lot of early adventures with her, um, and she she goes on to the lifestyle for a period of time and then goes off and then sort of disappears. And I think she likes to, yeah. to come on, grab as many dicks as she can, <laughs> and then and then, and then and then get off. And I... Um, but we're still, you know, so we still have the message and from her. Yeah. Herself, she? Mm. But, yeah. um, so we've seen her socially a few times, but we're kind of, we're grown up now on our own. <laughs> yeah, I think we spread our wings a bit, didn't we? And went, right, we're ready to venture out and cast the net into the couple's territory. Yeah, and I think yeah. that, that became a lot more interesting to us. Not to say that we'd, we'd turned down unicorns. It was but... more interesting from a social perspective because we went into this wanting to make some good friendships as well. Mm. And we liked the, the dynamic, I think, of meeting couples and right. going out with them and making connections and having dinner and all the rest of it. And, you know, if things didn't end up with a pants off scenario, then it doesn't matter. We've all had a great night. Yeah, It's a bit more limiting, I think, when you're just with one woman and, you know, whilst you can socialise, the three of you are like, um, OK, a couple is, is a better dynamic, I think. Maybe a tribe of women. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to take a Coalition. tribe of women to dinner. What do you think I am? That'd be amazing. <laughs> but but no single it. men for you, Mrs. H. He gets a tri- <laughs> he gets a whole tribe. Don't spoil her. <laughs> <laughs> make the tribe as well. Yeah, just just a harem of women all like feeding them. <laughs> Weird <Weirdly enough. laughs> So, so have the has the couple dynamic seemed to be more what you guys have been searching out then since since I that think- point. Yeah, it's it's led to some really great relationships, like friendships, generally. Yeah, I think some of the people that we've met within the lifestyle have become our best friends, yeah. and we talk to them every single day. Um, and we meet up with them regularly, so we've made some fantastic friendships. And those guys, you know, we, we, you know, whatever the family crisis or whatever happens, they're they're there for us, which has been yeah. really cool. Um, and you know, there's some friends that aren't quite to that level, but for us, the the couple interaction, the fact that, you know, you get to meet this couple, you get mm. to see how they interact with each other, you get to see their dynamic, yeah, I like hear that. their journey. That's always really fun. Mm. And I think if you if you can understand a couple really well, then you you can learn a lot from them yeah. as well. So mm-hmm. I, I really like just hearing people's stories. It doesn't have to be the lifestyle, but just how do they get together, what, what, what they've been through, what, what It's nice done. to see a couple together um, and, and know that they've gone on a journey and, you know, had a relationship and they're happy. And yeah. secure, and they're not, and, and you know, see anyway. how they interact with each other too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's just yeah. really nice to to see other people just as much in love with each other as we are. Yeah, right. I like that. Yeah, it's cool. I I kind of like that that sort of that well you do it as well the when you go to a club and you spot couples and you're trying to put who's with who <laughs> together and their interactions yeah, and, I do. Um, and probably give them nicknames oh, God. probably I, do, I give everyone nicknames you do you're terrible at that <laughs> um, yeah, I, I don't know what that feels like at all to get a nickname from somebody in, <laughs> do, in do the not. uk oh, okay we'll, we'll we'll come up with a good one for you soon so so I for anybody listening just- Mrs. H thinks that I am Ross from Friends. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Could you be any more like Ross from Friends? Yep, totally. Uh, uh, to be fair, you've gotten that a lot jokes. of your life. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've been getting that since fifth grade, so I'm used to it by now. I'm really very perceptive. You know, spotted that straight away. I will point out mm-hmm. that the, the camera we're using isn't HD, though, so that may well be, uh, you know, what's causing it. It might just, you don't really look like Ross at all. Yeah, he does. that's perfect Uh, all right well back to the show (laughs) i know i know you've talked about jealousy on your on your podcast as well but i wanted to i guess ask you to expand a little bit on how you have dealt with that since it, it you brought it up it has been an issue for you if you had any tips or anything for people who have experienced that hmm Ooh. Well, Mr. H is, is generally the one who will struggle with the jealousy. <gasps> yeah, that's true. That's true. But so you know that. I know. So because you know that, you're prepared for it. Yeah. And I... you've explored every avenue and you know how to deal with those things that you know will trigger that. Well, for me, it was an unknown. It, it was an unknown. But the way I deal with it is to find out, is to think through everything that could possibly happen. Batman my way you through do. life. 
and and understand how I'd feel in different scenarios. Um, and, and we more, talk it through. Yeah, and talk it through and, and learn about it. So it's kind of how does a party work? How does a whatever work? What, what can go wrong? What are the things that people mm. learn? And then just try and knowledge my way through it, um, like a video game cheat sheet. But we also set boundaries in advance about what we'd be happy with each other doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, but, but, that. but that's the whole context of what can you do and what can happen. Yeah. And But it's where people try and break those rules with you that you mm. that you get a bit upset but it's those but unknown you, factors yeah it, it was very much an unknown and not knowing how so it oh, was an emotional response for me mm, it, it was it was a totally emotional stimulus that caused it it wasn't uh it wasn't necessarily something that happened that i hadn't foreseen it was more me reacting to an, an emotional situation that developed in front of me. And I she didn't. played with my Transformers, that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't know how to cope with that. Um, so it was, it was Mr. H having, it wasn't a sexual thing, it was, uh, oh. it was purely it was, on like the attention, emotional uh, side of things. It was a kind of aftermath, him having a bit of a, a cuddle. It was a cuddle. It was a cuddle. Of all things that I've been accused of, mm. having a cuddle. <laughs> because I, I hadn't foreseen that ever coming up. In, in any of our interactions because I think cuddles are intimate and they're ours and whilst we share intimate moments with other people I don't think cuddles were ever kind of in my own agenda right. because they're like they're ours to be fair I was flipping knackered yeah, I put yeah, in yeah. a really good effort so in there, there was a lot of context around and that. I couldn't move from where I was <laughs> it was just like a swaddling so walrus the, 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 <laughs> the context there is it was it was 4 a.m we were super tired uh, but the night had clearly wound up and we were going to wait for a taxi. And at that point, it was clear that you were sleepy. And for you, it was like a natural reaction to be yeah, cuddled by a nice lady that's just had sex with you. But for me, I was like, no, 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 no. I want I want that cuddle now. That's not that's not something I kind of. But kick you in the face about. saying this is Sparta <laughs> was probably not the way to go about solving that issue. No, I felt jealous. I know you did. That's what I felt, that's, and I'm not used to that. And that's why you called the cab, and we, we got out of there within about three but minutes. But I recognised how I was starting to feel. And I hadn't I even got the baby wipes out yet. <laughs> oh, God. And I didn't want to cause a scene. I didn't want to ha- talk about it then. I just knew that was kind of where I was, my, my mind was going. And it was nothing anyone had done wrong. It was purely an emotional reaction to something mm-hmm. I hadn't thought about. So to get used to this concept, I've just been going around cuddling everybody. <laughs> and... <laughs> It's it's really difficult trying to get random women in the street to cut my balls for a couple of minutes, <laughs> oh, but I'm no. I'm trying. No, so we, has we, it has it come up again, or, or no, have you guys no. just avoided it? No, we haven't avoided it, and it hasn't come up again. But we talked about what we could have done differently, and I know what we what we could have, what what contributed it a little bit was the fact that the dynamic of the room was set out so that it was on two like two beds. Mm. Uh, so that didn't help because we were separated as couples. We like to play generally on a in the same bed. area, on the same bed yeah. if we can. We like to be able to go plonk, touch each other. And we're, we're and, cool. and had we all been mm. in one place, it, it wouldn't have really happened because I would have gravitated to him anyway afterwards. But this wasn't room where, where this all kind of finished, really. So next time, if that ever happened... I, I think I would know to intervene a bit earlier and not just sit there and like worry about it. Mm. Right. Because yeah. you know, ultimately, I, I could have just popped over there and jumped in the middle of you and gone, "Hey, I want to cuddle." Or you use your special special Mister H whistle to pull me back. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, when when you're tired and it's late and you just think your your kind of emotions kick in and they take over. I do wonder about this lateness that always occurs with with the lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Do you guys get that as well where yes. everyone is up it's till so ridiculous late. o'clock? Because no one seems to be able to start anything before like 11. I don't know right. why. No, people we do, we people have... show up to places at like 11 o'clock and you're like yeah, why are we not showing up at 9 right. o'clock? Well yeah. actually we to be fair we have we do have a, a couple a couple of friends who they will they will play and be done by 12 o'clock on the dot. I don't know how they do that. I, and it, it's just so refreshing. We're like in the taxi on the way home and I'm like, what the fuck? 
just happened? This how is this they night progress so quickly? Yeah, we were. Wow. It's like bang, 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 bang. Not literally. And <laughs> like there you go, guys. And that includes like going for yeah, a courier. They've or something. been doing that for like, years. I reckon they just know how to move. They are along. smooth criminals. I tell you. <laughs> well, that's, that's we just good. like we just get caught up in that. Oh, I don't know how to start this. Or what should we? Do? Should we just have another chat, another drink? And it just before you know it, it's. Hang on. Closing you know how to start it. Midnight. You start it with the click of the fingers. I can, but again, everyone that's, needs to get to the same point as me. That's so. your secret weapon. Mrs. H has a habit of just clicking <laughs> her fingers. You just take your top off. You uh, go over there and start doing that with him. And for some reason, it just works. People just start doing it. They start disrobing. Because start... people need a bit of direction eventually. Oh, I know, but maybe if you did that two hours earlier. Uh, I'll try it. Nine o'clock. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Start, okay. start doing that at seven and everyone will be done by 9.30. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The pizza will be arriving at 10. Everyone goes, goes right. home at 11. It's like a perfect yeah. night. I know. I'll try it, shall I? <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll just start it all off a bit. I think people are naturally, like, you know, anxious a lot of times in those situations. And even though you want to be there, you want to do things, it's it's awkward to try to get things started mm-hmm. uh, yeah. once in a while. Can't so be. you need that person to just be like, okay, we're doing this now. And then just get the ball rolling and people usually follow. Right. Yeah, um, but if he's 4 a.m. finishes, they're just not good. Have you guys ever used the naked man trick where someone goes to the bathroom and everyone's like, let's just get naked and wait for them? Have you ever tried that? <laughs> we no. did that it ha- did that it happened to me <laughs> once <laughs> at a party when everybody decided that they were going to go downstairs to the at the house party. And I was like, okay, I'll be right down. I got to use the bathroom. And I, I went and peed. And I was only, it, I was only like a minute behind everybody. And literally, by the time I got there, like everybody was in like full blown orgy already, like paired <laughs> up and like the bed. And I was like, "What the fuck happened?" Like I've been gone for like thirty seconds, and everybody was like, <laughs> like just took took everything off, jumped on the bed, and was started going at it. And I was like, "Jesus!" And so I got kind of st- I got stuck on the perimeter for a little while. You worked your way in. <laughs> But anyway, the bathroom visit is always a is a is a treacherous moment though. The yeah. amount of things that can happen in that bathroom visit is quite. You funny. resent it, like, oh god, I don't want to leave now. What's going to happen if I go? But we've we've yeah. met couples that have needed to go for like five oh, minutes. Oh god, it's like in it's beer. It's the beer. Is that you? Is that is somebody's pointing to themselves oh, there? Really? We're not going to reveal which one of you is doing that. Once you break it's the Ross. seal. <laughs> <laughs> Should I start calling you that from now on? No. So I, I was <laughs> pee any more like Ross. <laughs> so I, I was curious. You, it sounded like when you guys started this, you thought that Mr. H was going to be the one having jealousy issues. Yeah. Have there has that happened, or has it mostly just been the one oh, yes. cuddle issue? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've thrown the towel in at least three times. You have at least three times. I, I think some, sometimes it's. Um, it's um, how does the night go, um, and if it doesn't quite go how you want it to, or, or expected how your it to go, pre scenario went. Yeah, I'll. <laughs> I, I have a habit of not throwing my toys out of the pram, but getting a bit arsy about it, just to myself, not rather than anyone else. Um, I think there's also some, um, like for example, like Mrs H doesn't like sex to go on for a long period of time, right? No. So I am conditioned not to do that. So if if I go on for the required Mrs. H period of time with with my other partner and the, her partner is going on for like 45 years and I'm still looking at my watch six days later and it's still <laughs> going on. I, I, I was like, what the fuck is going on? Apologies I know she doesn't language. like that. Yeah, it's, I, like, I know she doesn't like that. And also, like, it's like quite. It makes you, it yeah. demasculates. It just demas- demasculates yeah, a bit. Does, so yeah. after that meet, I was like what the bloody hell is going on here? This isn't like, you know, normally she's just happy with this and she seemed to be enjoying it and it's fine. But But you're not going to turn around and say, hey, can you just wrap this up now? Well, yeah, I mean, I couldn't play the countdown music like, do-do-do-do, do do Time's up, come on. Countdown in America? They might not know countdown in America, but it's a game show that has a timer and it has a clock. I'm doing it with my hand. It's really bad. Yeah, and it it does that. <laughs> moment um but it, it was that really um really unsettled me actually because i was like well, the time the, factor, the, the yeah. time factor and to be fair his his other half was absolutely fine and she was cool and she'd had a great experience but for me i was like she was probably relieved that she wasn't on the receiving end of the 45 minute marathon well i know but what woman likes like pounding some, away for 45 some women minutes? do everyone's different to her uh. but but that's the thing <laughs> if you, you kind of get used to that and then you're like well 
how does that make you feel? So I came out of that place and tired. And and she's like, <laughs> so was okay. That was a really fun night. And I'm like, never fucking doing this again. I hate this. I'm never going part of this lifestyle and throwing all oh, my toys at the pram. Blah 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 blah. Like and I and properly... I was like, did the lady you were with have fun? And I was several like, times. Yeah, she did. Yeah, I might have made her come a couple of times. Well, where you go? You know, kicking so... my feet along as I go. But you just don't. It's, yeah, I know. it's such a strange moment where you're like so used to this is what you do and this then that's what's happened. I'm like, oh my god, but. As I've got gone on a bit and sort of become more experienced, mm. you sort of celebrate those differences. And if someone wants to do that with you for God right. knows that amount of time, if you don't tell them to stop, Fuck that's on, on yeah, your shoulders. Exactly. And, exactly, you know, yeah. and mm-hmm. you know, you need to be able to say, I'm, you, you know, is this, is that everything you're going to do? Is this, is, that, is this the end of the night now? Is this, are we going to be here all night? I'd really like a toasty sandwich now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I, I think that's I, a really I, good point what you said there about celebrating the differences because that's a, that's definitely a learning uh yeah. something to learn in the lifestyle is that and well just and being having sex with other people is that everyone does it a little differently and those differences yeah. can be awesome and amazing they can also be difficult to navigate sometimes but it it's yeah. still it's part of the whole experience yeah and i, and I think on top of that there's going to be times where you you see your partner do something with somebody else that you've tried to do with them and they're like, no, no, I don't really want to do that. And you're like, okay. And then you see them doing it with somebody else and they're loving it. And you're like, well, what the fuck? Like yep. there's been times where I, like we'll try to do something and she'll be like, no, no, that doesn't feel good. That hurts. That doesn't do this. That doesn't do that. And then you see her doing that thing with somebody else and you're like, well, wait a minute. I thought you didn't like that. And <laughs> But, but it's just a lot of it can be the night and the like just yeah, the, the way mean, you're feeling that day too. Different things can feel good at different and, times and and everyone's shaped a little different. Yeah. I mean, it's just there's so much that goes into it that it's hard sometimes not to let that kind of fuck with your head where you're like, wait a minute, that's our thing or that's something I didn't think she liked and all of a sudden she's going to town doing this. So yeah, I think it's easy to let those things slip in. Um, yeah, we we had an experience with a couple once where, and and you called time on it halfway through, because he was talking to me constantly, the guy, and I and I was talking to him, and halfway through, you you grabbed me for a chat, and you were like, "What the what the fuck are you two talking about? You don't talk during sex. Yeah. Like, what what are you what are you going on about?" I said, "Nothing. I'm just I'm just telling him like." What, what he can't do to me <laughs> in fact and he's just saying my name a lot which I'm not used to you're like oh okay all right I'm like there's nothing really going on but I appreciate it's not something that we've done a lot of ourselves so to see that right for you was like what Wait normally I just say my own name <laughs> <laughs> or Geronimo <laughs> <laughs> oh, Mr. H, you're the best. That's not you saying it, it's me. <laughs> I'm the bomb. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so that, you know, again, that little tiny nuance of something a little bit different where someone yeah, yeah. was like constantly talking in my ear and you're like, what's he saying to you? I need to know. Like, like, we don't do this. Like, no, we don't. And we're not really saying a lot, but you didn't know that. No. no I, I think, yeah. I was like, what the hell's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Part of, the fun, part of the fun part is you can sometimes try something with somebody else that you didn't think you would like and you love it and you can bring that back to your partner and be like, hey, I didn't think I'd like this and I tried it and now it's awesome. <laughs> so like, <laughs> sometimes that happens too. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. So have you guys found ways to get through these things and it sounds like you've grown from them and potentially they're not huge they're not explosions huge. or... No, we're not. I mean, we we always said we we're not trying to patch anything up. We're trying to just enhance what we have. So sure. there's there's never been anything that we that hasn't settled us so much that we we know it's a kind of a, a deal breaker. Yeah, and I think quite often we, we we do. There's a couple of things we do is that if if we've had a drink or two, we we try not to discuss things because we know that that tends to lead to many right. problems that night. So it's best to leave it yeah. and pick it up the, It's, it's the never next a productive day. conversation if you've had too much to drink. So we always know to reflect and then sleep on it and then talk about it in the morning. And but... then podcast about it. <laughs> <laughs> what? We, what we, always, podcast? we always talk so much about things. So that's just what we do. Mm. And, and I think that when we don't talk about things, um, that's when things could be very wrong. What's been co- what's become quite interesting, though, is some couples that we've played with that have gone on to become a really good friends we've also talked to them about those problems mm. so you know and it may have happened with them but we're quite 
happy and comfortable having that chat with them and sort of having that four way dynamic and going, actually, guys, this didn't this didn't quite work so well for us. Yeah. You know, I hope you don't mind, but this is you know, we'd love to meet up with you again in future, but we just need to steer clear of doing that yeah. or making sure this and that's been really productive as well that and you know people really appreciate um us having being honest and open and having those well, conversations I mean, well, kind of where i see it what was the point of having these relations and sex with people if ultimately you're not going to go away with a level of enjoyment mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah. You, you don't want to be spending like your entire evening with someone for them not to be enjoying it because they couldn't tell you or talk to you mm-hmm. about something right. i'd much rather we we all just said it did yeah. it you know told each other what was on our mind told us what worked for each other what's the point yeah, otherwise you're just faking your way well, through it you say this but uh, you've not had the greatest run with the chicks have you <laughs> to be fair well no but i'm a special little biscuit <laughs> i think it's I it is interesting though so how some guys respond to that some guys will uh, step up to the plate and 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 try and go or some some of them will just some be like, just Meh. assume but it, they're just gonna knock out the park and it doesn't happen and they're a bit like oh okay <laughs> so i don't know i've been quite honest with the some of the guys though and said that's not that's not gonna work uh, there's nothing better than hearing uh, mrs h say no 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 <laughs> that's not going to work <laughs> and then and then see a hand being moved in the corner of the room somewhere <laughs> Oh, what's the point? <laughs> Explaining all that energy, doing something that's not working. But it's interesting. Have, <laughs> yeah, have you guys, going into this, did you guys lay out sort of rules and boundaries and here's what I, what works for me, what works for you, and did you kind of tailor your rules to those things that you know work for you guys? And and on top of it, have, have those things evolved as you guys moved through it the last two years? I think, I think they have a bit. Um Generally, our rules are that I'm allowed to do everything and you're oh. allowed to do nothing. <laughs> um, no. I think we, we, we started off with, well, we have progressed a bit. We started off very much with a unicorn and it was only ever going to be single females. I think we've progressed a couple. Well, we have progressed a couple. And, Obviously. Um, and then we were only a soft swap, but now we full swap. Yeah. Mm-hmm. With um, the right people. With the right people. I think we, mm-hmm. we, we prefer to, well, we are same room only. Yeah. We've, we've established that we like to be within arm's reach of each other purely because we just like that level of intimacy. And if you can't grab each other, then it feels, yeah. it, it doesn't feel like a shared experience quite so much. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We I mean, don't want to be separated. Um, that's just us though. That's just us. I think other rules, I mean, we kind of, we, we save some things for ourselves. So uh, anal's clearly on the table just for us. <laughs> I like the way you say it's on the table. It's on the table just for us. <laughs> it is. It's, uh, it's anal Sunday tomorrow. Yeah. Oh. Do you remember? <laughs> <laughs> See, it's something I'm not going anywhere with anyone else but you. I know. It's off the cards. I wouldn't be comfortable with you doing that with someone else. No, then that's fine. No. Um, so we've kind of. So that's a hard limit. It is. <laughs> it's <ever> so, <laughs> hard limit. Mm-hmm. so much innuendo, <laughs> so little time. Um, but we kind of. <laughs> we kind of gone through and. It's more play style, I think, than, than hard rules. And I think we kind of figured out that we'd like to be near each other, we like to interact with each other we like to be able to if one of us isn't happy be able to to support the other um mm. not that that's happened many times really? i think there's only really ever been one meet where we one we actually one one meet with clay where we pulled the plug midway through yeah um, only one yeah yeah and i that's pretty good then i pulled the plug i was like no. did. and, and mm-hmm. called the taxi and we departed um so but you kind of which, learned... is, which is hard to do by the way yeah, oh, it's... Very. yeah very hard it is but equally i think you're doing the right thing oh for uh, sure yeah and then they were there at a social the very next night oh. at a big meet and greet event yeah but they were very professional it, uh, yeah it was it was <laughs> totes orcs <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> totes orcs really awkward <laughs> Really accurate. so i i think I like we we need to ask what happened that made you pull the plug otherwise so, i won't sleep tonight <laughs> you might not sleep tonight if we do tell you but we're all happy to tell you um yeah so we we were playing with this couple and i think we've mentioned them on our podcast before mm-hmm. um very early on very early on in our so this may journey. be a bit of a trail for, for one of our forthcoming episodes but however we we played with them before and they weren't our real cup of tea they weren't as um we weren't particularly there wasn't attracted a massive to them. amount of chemistry there but it was early days in the whole thing and we were like okay 
let's just find our feet a little bit and, and see, see how it goes. See if it works. Mm-hmm. Um, and we we went back <laughs> like a second absolute time. idiots because you know in in your early days. You, you, you often do and these to be things. Fair, they were really lovely people, and and they, yeah, they were very nice people. And anyway, so we were playing the, the card game, um, the the adventures and lifestyle or whatever it is card yeah. game that that um that we got it a thing guys lots mentioned of and spin the bottle type things and you know mm-hmm. like icebreakers to take clothes. So on you you'd idea. done a lap dance for the guy, fucking blinding lap dance. It was like uh, it was like yeah. um, down in <laughs> Mexico. You used you, in fact you insisted on using. Down in Mexico yeah, from it was a really good song. Um, <laughs> Death anyway. Proof. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that how she did that it was brilliant. It was lovely. I enjoyed it very much. And, and um, so did he. And he did it very much. And the 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 lady of this this pair um, was just kind of rolling around the floor. And so uh, she out, just pulled, wasn't engaged. She just with no. Things. And so we pulled out a card, and um, I, I my card was do a sexy dance. So I did a fucking sexy dance. I, in fact, I did a comedic dance, as you guys well, might you imagine did. from me. Um, uh, uh, but it was it was pretty sexy, and I, I put a lot of effort in. But she could not have been less interested. And so I kind of you, you obviously you go into this and you place a value on yourself, and um, you also place a value, I suppose, on your play partners. It's kind of mm-hmm. you know where, yep. where are they in, in, in that thing? And I was kind of like, you both need to make an effort. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Every. It's, if everyone makes an effort, that's cool. And sometimes just making that effort can elevate people beyond where you initially feel about them. But yep, she yeah. kind of gone into the negative effort zone and was just rolling around the floor like a fucking walrus, apologies for my language. Oh, and I, I just got to the point where I was like, well, she's not... She's making you do all the work. She's making me do all the work. And at this point, we were only soft swap. They were... They, they, they and they were, really wanted to They full really swap. wanted to full swap. And we said no. And... Because we hadn't given in to that demand, she'd thrown the toys out the pram and wasn't interested. She was interested being bratty. And was being bratty. Yeah. Why is it always so many fucking bratty women? <laughs> seem to, I seem to find she, that. She this. was very def- definitive about what she wanted from you and you wouldn't deliver because no. why should you? No, because that's not what we'd agreed. No. So I literally stood up, pulled my phone out. Not No scene or anything. We just kind of like moved over to each other and let them play. And then... And then Called together, a cab and, and then, then quietly called a cab while they were kind of together, and then we just disappeared quietly. Yeah, yeah. And then awkwardly <laughs> saw them the next night. Brilliant. Yeah. Right. So it was uh, just not meshing on the play styles, or yeah, yeah. yeah. I think they were very, very, very experienced, and they were very smooth with the way they handle stuff, um, and. I, yeah, I kind of, it was that like whole divide and conquer routine, wasn't yeah, it? They, where they knew what they wanted and they were very clever at um, separating us early on and you know getting kind of what they wanted quite quickly. And we were like, oh my god, we were patty in their hands a little bit, really. Mm, but I, I wasn't comfortable, and no. so I just said, okay, well let's let's not do this. Yeah, and right. and once you've done that once, it becomes a bit more like actually. The, that the worst that what's the worst that can happen? You, you know, yeah, you, we're not dating these people. Yeah, we, we don't owe them something. I mean, right. well, well, and you can be polite. Be, you can be, and then we'll like, yeah. right? They, um, they did unfriend us, uh, which is awkward. Yeah, never like an unfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Even though we, we didn't really want to stay friends. No, we didn't. But it's not the point. <laughs> no one likes being unfriended. <laughs> Nobody loves an unfriending. Right, it's right. brutal. So. <laughs> Being that the it sounds like a lot of the the I don't know weirdness or hiccups that you guys experienced were pretty early on. Is there any advice that you guys would go back and give yourselves now? Mm-hmm. Well, I get, go back and give yourselves your, your beginner selves that you know now that you've learned. Uh, <laughs> we talked about this the other day. Yeah, I, yeah. Th- th- this this. A few things. First, firstly, the that the end result when it works, it's brilliant. It's amazing. The friends you you'll meet, the the, the people that you you meet, the, the adventures you have, make it worthwhile. I mean, just like talking to you guys, you guys are fantastic. It's lovely being able to share this moment, and we're yeah, really proud you. to be able to do that. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, so. Uh, you know, it's all been leading to this moment. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, we can, we can turn the podcast off now. We got what we wanted, so. <laughs> no, I'm not going to start singing just yet. I'll say that for later. Um, but that, I think had we, we, we suspected that it would be awesome. 
and we had an inkling that it would be cool. But uh, so many of our early adventures were absolute mess ups that, that we threw the towel in so many times and we took breaks and whatever. But had we known that it was going to be that good when it does work, we'd have been like, actually, that would have helped us. Mm, I think the yeah. other thing is to, to just not quite be so trusting with people, I mm. think, and just question something if it doesn't feel right to you then it probably isn't then it probably isn't if someone's yeah. not showing you pictures of them as a couple then, oh, yeah. you know what's why is that if someone's if it's just dick pics then then you know someone's attitude and it's you kind of learn these things as you go along but when you're in your early phase you kind of like this is the norm isn't it okay fine we'll just roll with it but it doesn't right. have to be that way no so and i think for me it's um I mean, not that I would change anything necessarily about what we've done going back. It's more about just reading your partner's signals mm-hmm. and being hyper aware of things. If yes. They're not. Listen to what I'm saying. There you go. It's, it's, it's I now carry advice. an alarm everywhere I go. <laughs> it's like a bat signal. Uh, I mean, there's a couple of times I think if we could have gone back, we probably would have just ended the night a lot sooner because it's it's mm. clearly dead in the water. There's no point wasting no our time. No one to abort. Yeah, no one to just like pull out and yeah. It's and then you and then you get home in the middle of the night and you're angry because you wasted your time. Yeah, uh, well, you you don't you don't owe them anything. They would do the same to you, I think. So well, I, I think part life's of it, too though, short to spend time with people you don't really like. But in a way, <laughs> I kind of like those adventures because Some of them they give you fun. a story. <laughs> and sometimes yeah. those stories you get. And those are the ones that, that help you meet better people. So when you sat there mm. and you tell them the story and they go, bloody hell, we had something similar or something worse. And you trade war wounds. It's like Jaws. And you start getting your leg up on the table and yeah. showing them the bites and stuff. Scar, yeah. yeah, look at this scar. No, I get yeah. that. Yeah. But equally, life is too short to, you know, waste your time spending time with people who don't really add any value. No, that's true. Yeah. So we need to just get a little bit better sometimes, I think. It's just... Maybe and I think I think it's important too to say that you can get out of those situations tactfully and without severing all sorts. You know, you don't have to be the people who yeah, get up and storm out, right? About and, it. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. That's why we always carry smoke bombs now. <laughs> we just throw them on the ground. We're out there like Batman ninjas. Like, <laughs> I'm out. Bed hoppers out, yo. <laughs> so, I'm that? curious. Is what kept you guys going? back or coming back to it is that you know you had you know a missed up here a missed up there a bad experience bad experience and yet you kept coming back and coming back was mm-hmm. there something i guess were you guys seeing benefits to your relationship that you're like okay it's worth it we're we're growing so much together that it's worth this there, bad experience there, yeah and that. there's a couple of reasons why uh, partly because we had some really good experiences in the middle of all these bad ones yeah which we haven't necessarily talked extensively about so we did have enough good things happen as well yeah that kind of offsets that Mm -hmm. um and i think we started talking about that a little bit in our recent podcast didn't we we started saying actually what's right about this what's gone well for us let's be a bit quite uplifting and positive Mm. uh and secondly playboy swing told us to (laughs) (laughs) so yeah there had been some positive meets as well so it wasn't all doom and gloom it really wasn't um, and what was the second point I was going to make? I can't read your mind. You should be able to. It's been 18 years. <laughs> uh, oh, no, what kept, kept us coming back, okay, is, um, okay, it actually has enhanced our relationship because we've learned so much about each other. We we talk everything through and learn more and more and more each time we have these conversations. Even the bad experiences, yeah. you kind of go, actually, why was that bad and why is that relationship not working? And you kind of go, well, actually, we feel pretty good. We've got this you know, fairly nailed down and we're doing yeah. pretty well and, and yeah. we will take what you have yeah, what can we messed take up from on that and not replicate on that in the slightest, which is which is good. Yeah, unless there's something different for you. Um, I, I think for me it's been... Uh, it's, each little stumble kind of does... It, it not only builds a store in a picture, but it also gives us that moment of connection afterwards. So even if you don't have the awesome sexy times, you still reconnect and you still mm. regroup. And that regrouping just makes you stronger. And yeah. your resolve yeah. becomes better as you go through that. And I, I, I really enjoy that part of it, that you've got that mm. connection. Plus, there's something amazing about the fact that you're doing something adventurous that 99% of your friends wouldn't be able to do. And, and I, I don't 
I don't like the, the swinger snobbery of our relationship is so much better than you guys or no. you guys because we're doing this. But to a certain extent, you do feel like... We're living our life to the full. Yeah, and it's kind we're of... Having it's, lots it's, of fun. There's something amazing about that when you can mm. go, actually, we've got through all of this, all these tough, horrible, shitty little moments, and we're really good. So for me, that's why I keep going. It's kind of mm-hmm. so... Even now, if there's a shitty meet and trust, you know, we still have them. There's still more stories to tell. Um, you can you learn from them and, and you make them into entertaining podcasts instead. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're fun. I do. Yeah. You know, just, I was going to yeah. say, there was one story before we started recording. You said, I'll save that for the podcast. And now I don't remember uh, uh, what it was. <laughs> you guys won the exclusive. Cool. We can we can do that. So we, we had gone for um, what we'd call a social meet, um, just um, like a, a drink or two uh, with a couple. Um, and our, our rule is, you know, I think we talked about it on the podcast before, but we, we prefer not to play on a first date. We like to get to know people first and then... Uh, arrange a, a meet to, to to do the sexy time business and make sure stuff. we're both okay yeah and and have that chat um and i think uh, we've broken that rule a few times but on this occasion we did not we we met them at a, a local sort of pub and it was all very nice and we found out um while they're on the way there that they're not actually a couple they're fuck buddies and it always makes us a little bit worried because our experience of that previously has always been a bit mixed we've got some really great friends who 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 are friends with benefits mm. and mm-hmm. are almost like an old couple. But we also have met couples where it's just been an utter disaster. So we're kind of we're already on edge. And Mrs. H disappears to the bathroom while we're waiting for them. And they they rock up. So the, the, the picture wow. of the woman, I think if you guys have ever used a filter on a phone camera. <laughs> and you've ever like seen, a soft focus Yeah, filter. like a beauty filter. That thing was at 150%. I don't know how she managed to crank this thing up beyond it, but she looked, in real life, <laughs> she had had what I would say is a tough paper round. Um, and um, Yeah, her pictures <laughs> were not representative of what she looked no, like. And, and he, he looked like a normal guy. He was normal. But they, they, they'd come together as friends with benefits, oh, which we found out just before we met them. So you were in the bathroom, and they were coming up the stairs. And if you've ever seen the, the Simon Pegg Spaced series, oh, hey, she was a oh, bit so like funny. Marsha. So you, uh, she she was a drunken lush. Yeah, a drunken lush. Yeah, but not in an attractive lush kind of way. No. Oh, she was right. wearing Crocs. I swear she was wearing Crocs. So like, and <laughs> it was. Oh, it was there's hideous. nothing. There's nothing sexier than Crocs. No, that's true. There is not. I know. Uh, Especially if they got pins in the top that, that show the badges that you've collected. I mean, I came out of the bathroom and they were in front of me and I was walking behind and I saw your face. I was like, oh, God, no, it's too late to report. I, I used the here. special veto um, password, which is actually me hitting Mrs. H's right leg and going, <laughs> veto, 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 get the fuck out, veto, in front of them. How, it wasn't quite that bad. But I, we started talking to them and... They were quite entertaining in that kind of shambolic, where is this going to go? They were funny. She was rolling about all over the place. I don't think she was drunk, but she seemed like she was very drunk. I'll be honest, I thought she'd had a stroke or something. She just sounded really (laughs) odd from what we are. She she was slurring her words. She was necking back wine more than I did when we went to the the, the, on our last podcast. She was was like, so I a bottle of wine, like, Go on then, let's get to the night. <laughs> yeah, but she was drinking the bottles of wine to herself. <laughs> yeah. So the bar closed within about an hour. It closed a lot earlier. So we said, okay, we'll we'll go to another bar because the conversation was amusing us enough to, to warrant. And we'd already the chat. decided amongst ourselves already well, nothing uh, was going to happen between us two. We decided yeah, that nothing yeah, was going to happen. Nothing so happen. on the way over, we're chatting to the to the guy while the, the the woman was sort of zigzagging her way across the road, and <laughs> we're like, sorry, mate, it's not just not going to happen. He's like, well, I've I've never seen her drunk before. This is I don't blame you. Know, I, don't, I don't blame you. I don't know what's going to happen. So we we go into this <laughs> pub, and it's a proper spit and sawdust place. And about about half an hour of being there, that it's it's famous for um, the guy comes out with a with an acoustic guitar, and he sings uh, fun good, good songs. Good songs. Like so you will sing the Beatles and and, and and Yellow Submarine or Tub of Margarine as he you'll just sing it. Some and good he'll songs. sing. Uh, Green Day and all sorts of fun things and there's bunches and benches of tables it's a very thin long place and everyone jumps on the benches and starts dancing yeah so we're in there and this starts happening so we have a couple of drinks and we're like you know what fuck it we'll just 
have a nice we'll night. Just have a nice regardless. fun night and dance. This, this woman um, disappears <laughs> into the crowd. <laughs> now it turns out that it's a beach party night, and they've actually chucked a ton of sand in this pub. They've just like chucked it in there. Everyone's wandering around in Hawaiian skirts and Hawaiian shirts and hats and stuff. And and we're, we move our way from table to table to table, <laughs> dancing on it. She um, comes back. Well, she does come back. We get out opposite the guitar she player, and the guy's with us. Back. And she she pops up like a, a raptor out of the bushes in Jurassic Park. She has got a bandolier <laughs> of vodka shots on her. Where the fuck she's got it, I don't know. She's got a whistle. She's got three glow sticks. She's got a hat. She's got a Hawaiian skirt. A water pistol. A water pistol <laughs> filled, with vod- filled with vodka. We're like, where the fuck have you got this? She, she has been partying hard. So she turns around. And I'm, on, I'm on the bench dancing. And she literally, and she's on the floor. And she turns around and just bites me. Literally right in the gut. No warning. Above no, your belly button. Above, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Around around the belly button region. We can we can show a picture on uh, oh, Twitter. Should yeah. we? Need? We'll put a uh, we'll put a picture in the show notes. <laughs> yeah, please, yeah, please do. And, and she literally bites through my shirt. I'm not disrobed. There's been no sexy time instigation going on. We've made it very clear that that's not going to happen. Bites me and then disappears into the fucking crowd. Yeah, like some sort of. Weird. Like a muppet, like, like a muppet. Boo. Yeah. <laughs> if, if imagine how like rock run one. I'm doing the the hand movement here that these guys can see, but that you gentle listeners can't. But imagine me bouncing my hand up and down as though it was on a muppet. That's what I'm doing. And she just disappeared into the crowd. And anyway, the the night you know sort of ended you know a bit after that. And and I'm sort of. In fact, Mrs. H was dealing with a medical emergency in the place. Yeah. And you were a first aider and someone had hurt the shoulder. Anyway, we're, we're sat outside chatting to the guy while the bar was emptying after sorting out this poor girl's shoulder or something. And um, this this woman walks out with the crowd and she sways and zigzags her Still way to us. Still got all her party gear. <laughs> all right, treacles. <laughs> and we are like, what the hell is going So are we all getting our fuck on tonight? <laughs> no, said no, that. we are not. But the, like, why do you think this is happening? And just like, <laughs> turns to me, why are you sat on the floor? And I'm like, because you fucking bit me. And she's like, no, I didn't. And then saunters off into the the like door, it, like up a, up a road, like with traffic going on, and disappears, never to to no. to. Be no, seen again. Never saw again. So the, the next day we get um, a, a message from them on on, on kick, and the guy apologizes profusely. He says, "I'm so sorry what happened last night. Never seen a drunk. I'm not associating myself with her. The account is busted. We're going to take that apart." We have a message from her. Yeah. How's it going? Are we going to meet up and have some sexy no. times? <laughs> no, you bit me. Did I? <laughs> yes. Here's a picture of what you did last night. No, I didn't. <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is going Anyway, long story short. Um, oh, short so you offered to buy you a bottle of Jack Daniels to Which say sorry. It never fucking materialised. I didn't even get no. my bottle of Jack. No. And not that I needed it after that. Anyway, so she, <laughs> she, she then leaves the site and we never see them again. And um, that was my... My my being bitten story. <laughs> wow. So and, and I bruised like a an absolute peach. It's terrible. I'm marked like really badly. <laughs> so it looks like a vampire is taking a chunk out of me. So um, anyone that that is um, <clears throat> fortunate enough to play with me. Um, yeah, but I was slightest... so shocked when I well, saw it a couple of days later. <laughs> no, hell? it's a it's a pretty oh. aggressive bite. I mean, you. Right. So what yeah. we will, if you, with your permission, we'll put the picture in the show awesome. notes because yeah. I think yeah. I think anybody needs to see it yeah. it's pretty <laughs> fucking gross <laughs> yeah. if, if you can just circle it so people know where to look yeah we'll, we'll make sure to highlight it's it it's not so obvious enough <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, and, you know anyone that is, you know, desperate for a look at my chest gets a look at mm. it as well. So you know, two wins out of that. Really, I can't yeah. believe it. It's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that was that was one of our more interesting. One of your more bitey meats. Yeah, uh. people have a biting me. Mm. I don't know what it is. People keep doing it. Oh well, no. <laughs> so it's okay more... with the heat of passion. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. So thanks, thanks for sharing that story. So, uh, yeah. So so maybe. moving forward, do you, how do you guys picture the next two years going? Do you think you'll continue to stay in this and grow in it and and explore it, or are you feel like well, oh we're we're winding down and about no, ready to... we've got fun stuff happening right up until the end of the year anyway. Yep, totally. So well, we're going to desire. Going to desire, and that's at the end of the year. 
um, doing that. I think we've, we've got a bunch of parties to go to over the next few weeks. Mm. That, that doesn't really join up the whole year, but, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's a minor. Um, minor. It's nothing at the moment we're kind of like, no, we're done with this. It's it's still holding enough attention and intrigue and adventure for us, isn't it? Yeah, yeah I think I, I quite like the idea of building up a network of people that become more. So we've already sort of done that a bit, yeah. but more friends with benefits that we can, you know, it's yeah. kind of like, hey, what are yeah. you guys doing? Yeah. Come on, let's um, have a barbecue and get a fuck on and, you know, enjoy <laughs> that sort of that those sort of moments. And if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. But if it does, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but building the right sort of people, it takes mm. it takes us quite a lot of time. And I think we've got a few couples that that, that we're quite happy with and that, that we see fairly regularly, mm. but there's more to find out. I think that we want, want to explore clubs more because we're rubbish at clubs. We are. We haven't we're, been to many good ones. So we're going to one mm, mid, in a few months, I think. So. Mid in a few months. Mid in a few months. So descriptive. <laughs> in a few months. <laughs> <laughs> We'd like to go to more clubs. Yeah, there's there's that house parties, but you know we're going to our first fairly soon. Mm. It'd be good to explore that a bit. Um, you never know; you may get your single male in the end of the day. <laughs> wow! I know it's just I'm cloning myself. I'm just waiting for the clone to grow. At the moment, he's got tiny, tiny, you know, arms Deadpool and legs. Deadpool, legs. Deadpool, Deadpool legs. That's what it is. Deadpool legs. He has like little unicorn hands. I know. There we go. Ooh. So he's he's not a fully grown clone yet, right. but um, it'd be like Austin Powers, literally. <laughs> um, so I think you know we've got some pretty good things planned. I think we're still enjoying it. We're still having fun. The podcasting is it, it's helped, and I think yeah. really focused us. So we we love going on an adventure and then talking about it and and discussing it and bring it up and and it does kind of it focuses you up on what you mm. enjoy and what you think about and. And it doesn't, you know, makes all those stupid meets worthwhile as well. So, you know, if it does go <laughs> right. wrong, it's like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah I, wanted to, I wanted to ask, are you guys uh, out to anybody? I know you, I think you mentioned you've told some of your friends. So, yeah. Hmm. So we've told some friends. A small amount um, of we, trusted friends. Yeah. The kids uh, found out. Yeah. <laughs> that was an interesting conversation. <laughs> um, you told you uh, told my so sister, sister and my sister told all of her friends <laughs> that was great uh in fact we, we we got down to my sister's house and she had a collection of about six or seven people all sat there waiting to hear the story of what we've been up to <laughs> like it was some sort of coronation <laughs> party. It, it was, it was. <laughs> they put, put you on the spot <laughs> so we got there and they are all oh mr h is outing outing <laughs> uh, so we had lots of questions from that uh, we've not told your parents or my dad, and I think that's probably going to stay that way. Yeah. Although I think there's always the fear that we're going to see my dad on a swing of sight somewhere. <laughs> um, have, you, have you had mostly positive reactions? I imagine the one with the kids was a little bit tricky, but um, from other people? Yeah. Um, the kids the kids were tricky, and I think this, we're still in the middle of that zone. Yeah. Um, everyone else has been... Well, the, the funny thing is, we, we told our friends... And the first thing, without exception, they all say is, uh, Mr. H, are you okay? Is she making you do this? Oh, dear. <laughs> and it, it, without fail, I get taken aside and someone puts their arm around me. Are you okay? Are you sure you want to do this? <laughs> like, really? Like, I'm some awful kind I'm a delicate harness. flower. I need to be protected. Well, I think that's interesting because I think... Every other person that we've ever talked to that has had that happen, it's always people are worried about the woman being coerced into it. So <laughs> I guess I guess that doesn't say a whole lot about you, Mr. H. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Whoa. <laughs> no, I just, I, for, for real, I find that fascinating that, that they would assume that she's got you, I, you know, forced into they, it. They, they've known us for so many years, and I think they know how jealous he gets. No. Yes. No, 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 no. That's not why it is. Why is it? It's because they know what a floozy you are. Outrageous. <laughs> I, th- I think uh, generally um, I think I tend to be um, the jealous one. I do tend to be the one that worries yeah. the most. And I think people know that about me. And I, I tend to be um, a bit too caring. You're the emotional one. I am the emotional one. Mm-hmm. I'm the one that will cry at the fox and the hat. Mm. Yeah. So. Um, <laughs> So people do worry, and it's it's. But it is funny. They they just they always assume, and quite rightfully, that it's Mrs. H that's asked, you know that's <laughs> brought this up and put this on us. But you know, I'm a very willing participant now, and I, you know, I'm kind of 
um, it's a fun adventure for both of us. And I think it takes people a little while to get that around their heads. People have had lots of questions, but just fun questions, really, I think, more than anything. Like, how? What do you do? Does he sleep with the guys? Like, what? <laughs> It's, it's funny, isn't it? Well, we've had the keys in the vault question a few times. Yeah, quite a lot. We've had the so, jealousy all, all question. All the stereotype stuff. Um, yeah. yeah. All that stuff. But it's, you know, it's been interesting. It has. But I, I certainly am the one that everyone takes aside and sort of questions. No one's questioning. <laughs> no one worries about you. Everyone's yeah. all right about you. They're like, you'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I guess one of the one of the last questions we like to ask people is when you guys were getting into this, were there resources or throughout your journey, have there been resources that you guys found particularly useful, whether it's podcast books, yeah. movies? Besides, Ooh. of course, your podcast. And we'll, we'll definitely give you time to plug your show. So. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, there's, there's been a ton, actually. So um, for you, for, for me, because you know where to look. And you yeah. know what you're looking for. Well, I think... I think if you don't know what you want answers to, it's hard to find them in a way. Sometimes it can be. I think there's been, there's been a few things that have been really interesting. So the the swing set stuff was really fascinating. The articles from the, the, the audio book that Cooper did was really good mm-hmm. and really helped, pardon me, helped us on our journey. I think the Curious Couple podcast, the We Got A Thing, Swinging Down Under... Um, or helped us quite a bit mm-hmm. because we did we listened to those together. That was quite interesting. Yeah. Uh, once I, it tends to be that I'll listen to it and then if it's good or not, I'll pass it on to Mrs. H, mm-hmm. and that tends to work quite well. Um, she comes first. Also, a really good book, well worth reading. Okay. Uh, definitely worth it. Worth a look. There's a few other books, but I can't think of what they are off the top of my head. But we listened to a lot of stuff, read a lot of articles. Well, I did. You did. Um, the resource for me was you. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I, I kind of relied on you to do what you needed to do to familiarise yourself and research things to yeah. the point where you were comfortable. And then I kind of fed from you what, what you needed me to know or talk about. Yeah, I think... I do do sort of read that stuff and send it over to you. I think Reddit was really useful as well. Oh, ask Reddit or whatever. Yeah. No, not yeah. ask Reddit. Not ask Jeeves. <laughs> <laughs> not a yeah, ask, ask Reddit. <laughs> it's ask Jeeves. Dear Jeeves, how do you go about this lifestyle that I have heard about? <laughs> Take us back to yeah, years. I think for women it's a little bit different because – we women talk. can listen to podcasts no, too. No, I mean, women talk to their friends about fucking anything. Like, you name it, we'll go out for a drink and talk about it. Men don't. They just don't talk about shit like that. You, you don't. No, you, yeah. don't you don't have a, a kind of um, a readily available circle of men friends that you can all have, like, common conversations and interests. Not on a I, level that women do, I don't think. I don't really relate to that. I think I, I have conversations yeah. with my girlfriends that are different than Finn has with you don't have yeah. a close group of guy friends you have that type of conversation with just just Chandler and Joey <laughs> <laughs> and, so can I just, and Marcel can I talk to you about myself <laughs> Marcel. and be like oh no <laughs> whereas I will happily go and wax lyrical to my my girlfriends all the time and talk about stuff and they'll do the same with me Men generally don't have those conversations as readily. So were, were you having conversations about the lifestyle stuff with your friends before uh, you guys got into it? No, not before, no. No. Only once it all happened, really. And then I, I agreed I could tell a couple of them. And when we talked about it a lot. Mm, been, yeah. So that was what? a valuable resource for you then, oh, being yeah, able to bounce that off of people. Yeah, definitely. But I, I don't kind of go about things in the same way as you do, I think. But I think this is why the lifestyle has been one of the reasons why it's been so good for us, I think, as a couple, is that it does open you up to having those conversations with everybody and anybody. And you do kind of – you become much more relaxed mm. about having sexy con- – not sexy conversations, but conversations about sex mm. and conversations about what goes on. So that, uh, you can lay those things up. But, but that's actually made me more confident about having those conversations with people day to day as well. So it's kind of even just regular friends I'm much more open about. And they're always a little bit freaked out when you start that. But once yeah, they realise... so many like, people don't have good sex lives. Mm. And, and they don't know what to do about that. No, that's true. Which is quite sad. And I'm not saying they should join this and do this. And 
it's not like some cult thing. It's more a question of why don't you just be honest and, and have conversations about things and improve your sex life? Mm, it's yeah. true. I think that's the biggest key for all of this is having those conversations. Mm. Mm, I think so. Definitely. Although you're saying it's a cult, I really, really want a secret handshake. <laughs> <laughs> I really wanted to be like some sort of brilliant You're kind of bad, arm behind you? your head, <laughs> shake hand. It sounds a bit masony. Shaky hand gang. Yeah, a little bit masony, but that's fine. I can cope with that. <laughs> so I guess unless you guys have anything else you want to share with us or share with the listeners, maybe plug your show a little bit and and we'll say we'll bid you guys farewell. Yeah, it's getting late there too. <laughs> yeah, for us it's like, quarter past one in the morning That's sorry right. to keep you up so late no no it's, it's, uh, it's been it's absolutely good, fantastic good thank you uh, plug away do you wanna, oh right. you want me to you plug you know what you're doing do I yeah okay uh, <laughs> well if anyone wants to listen to us they can go uh, and find us at Bedhoppers UK on Twitter and from there they should be able to get links to our show download a podcast no one can email us because we don't have an email yet because that would involve replying to it. <laughs> <laughs> We're notoriously bad at that. Well, maybe that's ne- what's next then. What well, next? The future for the bedhoppers will be an email. <laughs> and in six months, we'll have carrier pigeon. <laughs> soon we'll be able to write letters. It'll be brilliant. But if you can communicate to us with the power of your mind, we'll, we'll, we'll be sure to answer that. <laughs> Professor X style. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you guys for coming on and having a good laugh with us and mm-hmm. sharing a little bit of the behind the scenes and some exclusive footage, too. Yeah, I know. It's been awesome talking to you guys. Do, and, do we want a little exit jingle? Oh, yeah. We'll pl- play <laughs> us out, huh? Yeah. Play, play you out. out. Okay. All right. <laughs> Hey. <laughs> Hi guys, thank you and have a great Hi. evening. Good night. Good night. Hi. <laughs> good one. Is that a good Ross? Yeah. <laughs> Ross here. <laughs> People do call you Ross ever since you were little. I know. Anyway, thank you to the Bed Hoppers for coming on and talking with us. If you haven't listened to them yet, you're definitely going to want to listen to their show because it's a freaking riot. Yeah, it's hilarious. Um, And they have a lot of good insight, too. It's not just funny. They also have a lot of good stories, a lot of good, um, I guess, thoughts on the lifestyle. And it's funny. And it's funny. Uh, In the meantime, next week, if you're not busy around the same time, you're going to want to listen to our interview we do with... Our couple, Eric and Catherine, they are a poly couple out of the East Coast who run a poly meetup group. So that's a pretty exciting interview. We had a lot of good good details yes. coming out of that one. Yes. And we will see you all in one week. And don't forget, if you want to reach out, we'd love to hear from all of you. Our website is normalizingnonmonogamy.com. You done? Yes. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs>